Welcome to episode 2270, 2270. Mike's Daily Podcast. Here we are. It's the weekend. It's Saturday. It's Mike Matthews, and I'm recording this thing called Mike's Daily Podcast. And this is where I sing. I sing all for freedom and for pleasure. Nothing seems to last forever. Everybody wants to listen to Mike's Daily Podcast. And I. Mike's. Daily Podcast. That's all I had. Speaking of which, Tears for Fears, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Mike's. You've probably heard that song. Daily. Many times in your life. Podcast. Have you ever really. Yeah. Looked at the lyrics? There's a line towards the end. Say that you'll never, 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 never need it. One headline. Why believe it? Everybody wants to rule the world. One headline, why believe it? In today's world where we, there are lots of headlines on the internet that we shouldn't believe. Things that podcasters say that we shouldn't believe. But then the last line of the song is all for freedom and for pleasure. Nothing ever lasts forever. Everybody wants to rule the world. It's true because... My lovely lady friend, her aunt passed away and it's hitting her hard. And I actually, she had left a message for me at work and it went to a voicemail and I saved the message from her aunt. So I have it for posterity. It's interesting, you know, to have someone's voice. And I was told by somebody Recently, someone who's in radio That here we are, we're in the recording profession And there's really no reason Why we shouldn't record Those family members That we might lose And actually this aunt that my lovely lady friend Lost, she was fairly And here's today's podcast picture Fairly young It was definitely a surprise And a shock to the family And it was stroke And I talked about, a week ago I was talking about strokes And trying to avoid them So anyway It's a sad period for her And Well think Think Wish well Think well Think good thoughts For my lovely lady friend Because it's a tough time Basil The late great Basil The boxer Yes Maybe we'll Post a podcast picture Of you Plosives Of you Basil the boxer Let's see I'm thinking Going back Maybe four years ago Four or three I can't decide I'm feeling like getting the heck out of here Let's go back in time four years ago To the wonderful year of 2017 And a podcast picture from then So yes Tears for Fears I'll be playing Tears for Fears And other great artists On my podcast uh, on, on my radio show And there's a link to it at Mike'sDailyPodcast.com If you would like to Check that out Mike'sDailyPodcast.com uh, There's a link to my show That is on from 9am to 4pm tomorrow And every Sunday Basil I don't think we're going to have A podcast picture of you but rather These beautiful waterfalls Bernie Falls That my lovely lady friend In honor of my lovely lady friend She went there four years ago I didn't know her yet But she went there Did she go there with an ex-boyfriend? I don't don't know But this is a picture He's not in this picture if she did Uh, So let's take You can see that picture at MikeSillyPodcast.com Very cool picture All right, Elon Musk is he going into space? No, it's those other guys. Uh, the virgin dude, galactic guy, and uh, Jeff Bezos. Richard Branson, that's right. But meanwhile, T- Tesla's, Tesla's CEO, Elon Musk, is expected in court on Monday to defend his role in Tesla's $2.6 billion acquisition of Solar City. 
That happened not four years ago, but five years ago. Shareholders have sued Elon, alleging that the deal amounted to a Solar City bailout that ended up enriching Elon and his family more than it did Tesla, among other things. If shareholders win the case, Elon Musk pay Musk Elon Musk Musk pay upwards of two point oh no point two billion two billion dollars from his considerable personal wealth. Solar City. Wasn't that like that big thing that conservatives use all the time when they're bashing Obama and he had something to do with it? I think so. Hey, what are you doing this summer? Let me ask you this question. Summertime, you might be going, oh, it's so hot. It is really hot in Podcastro Valley 10 today, the last place on Earth Cafe anyway. Thank you. That's where we are. It's hot. It's over 100 and... I'm in air conditioning, thankfully, but there are many that aren't. So there are ways to cool down. It's good to, if you don't have the air conditioning, to stay hydrated, to stay in the shade, to stay uh, around fans. Try and get a cross flow going. Some people even use, uh, they put ice in like a little thing of that you you know like one of those pans that you would use if you're cooking a turkey one of those foil pans and you put ice in it and you put a fan on the other side and that can kind of cool you down but be smart keep your dogs hydrated keep your cats hydrated keep water for them and shade but summertime you might be wondering what am i going to do with myself and my family during the summer here's a suggestion dock jumping it's the competitive sport of dock jumping that dogs do they jump into the water there are actually 26 events in the US in the month of August where you can watch dogs jump into the air jump off of a dock into the water and it's a competition. It's like they're dive, jumping off of a diving board. Also, there is a huge Little League uh, competition going on. The Little League version of the World Series actually pits U.S. teams against other nations. Also, an interesting thing to do is, as we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike Stilly podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valleyton. Fun to tick, tick on an unfamiliar outdoor activity that you've never done. Maybe when it's not quite as hot as today, but kayaking, bocce, croquet, badminton. Something completely new to you. Um, and then there's also helping out with charities. Being a blood donor. Pitching in to feed the hungry And you can also visit across America All kinds of these original bizarre places The world's largest Hercules beetle That's in Colorado Springs The tallest filing cabinet is in Burlington, Vermont Seattle, Washington has the world's largest cowboy hat and boots The Biggest grizzly bear with salmon can be found in Crescent, Oregon. The giant donut, the biggest giant donut is, uh, or rather the only giant donut in the world, I guess, is in Inglewood, California. You've seen it like in The Simpsons and television shows. World's largest baked potato is in Blackfoot, Idaho. The world's largest firecracker is in Nevada, in Armagosa Valley. World's largest jackalope is in Douglas, Wyoming. Uh, World's largest pistachio nut, Almogordo, New Mexico. World's largest buffalo is in Jamestown, North Dakota. World's largest pheasant is in Huron, South Dakota. 
the world's largest porch fr- swing is in Hebron, Nebraska. World's largest rattlesnake, Freer, Texas. Uh, the let's see, world's largest strawberry is in Strawberry Point, Iowa. World's largest Rubik's Cube I was talking to someone They were showing me They said they gave me a Rubik's Cube And they told me to mix it up And give it back to them And he actually solved it within five minutes It was pretty impressive Knoxville, Tennessee apparently is where that is World's largest Rubik's Cube I have not been to uh, Wait a minute No, I've been to Chattanooga, Tennessee Not Knoxville Uh, World's largest rocking chair Is in Gulfport, Mississippi World's largest peanut is in Ashburn, Georgia. World's largest element, element, elephant is in Margate City, New Jersey. And the world's uh, largest peach is in Gaffney, South Carolina. Here's a game you can play if you're driving to one of these places. It's called Fortunately, Unfortunately. You start by saying something scary. And of course, there's got, there's got to be other people in the car. Start by saying something scary like, Unfortunately, there's a tiger in the car. And then someone can say, Fortunately, he doesn't eat. Um, and then they say, you know, maybe they're a DJ for a radio station. And then someone else says, Fortunately, uh, unfortunately, he's looking at me. And he, on this game goes. Doesn't that sound like fun? Okay, then, oh, geocaching. Have you ever tried that? That's a sport some people do where you, it's a high-tech hide-and-seek in which you use GPS to find hidden containers and then you can add stuff to it and then hide it again. I have some neighbors down the street that love doing that. Unfortunately, their daughter, while playing that, got a bad case of poison oak, but she got over it. But it wasn't very fun Finally Oh catch a movie outside There's a lot of places Like in Fremont for example Here in the Bay Area You can watch a movie outside They're going to bring that all back As people have been vaccinated There's a guy I know Who's an anti-vaxxer And he was telling me today Wow you know I went somewhere today And a lot of people weren't wearing masks and he was all surprised And I was I wanted to say Yeah well it's because A lot of people got vac- Vaccinated So You know we're, we're comfortable With doing that now They We're doing exactly What you don't want us to do We're doing that So You're welcome Then There are all these Family owned amusement parks Around the country For example Cliff's Amusement Park That's in Albuquerque New Mexico They've got one of the world's Top wooden roller coasters Then there's the Huntington, West Virginia Camden Park is there It's a 107 year old oasis It's got like a kitty land, a haunted house Now actually this article is from 10 years ago So now I don't know if that If these places are still open that, That needs to be checked out completely But yeah there's lots of interesting Family owned amusement parks Around the country Some of them better than others Some of them if you go there now Might be abandoned and nobody there And those are interesting too Then you're doing that What's it called Uh, You're an urban explorer Is that what they call it Then you can also build a sandcastle That's another idea In the summertime Okay Thank you, Mike. Now, maybe you're outside in the sun and trying to cool off and you're being attacked by bugs. How do you fend off the insects? Here are some ideas. Avoid the gimmicks. Many times... Oh, by the way, that last article was from uh, Parade.com is what that was. I think that's the same people that they... Are Don't they make, do that magazine And uh, I don't know Where was I Oh Yeah They got this thing called the 
The Droughtlander? What is that? Outlander. And now I'm all kind of, Oh, Outlander's that show. The guy with the guy who's gonna play James Bond. What? Alright. Back to my story about insects. Many items that claim to help ward off bugs are unproven at best. Says one pest control person. Um, a, let's see. Pick your plants. The frequency of the type of pests you'll encounter depends on the structure and design of the yard. Uh, small plants and shrubs Attract insects and little birds And larger Trees draw bigger birds and mammals Plants such as chrysanthemums Lavender and lemongrass Might help deter pests Planting marigolds Petunias, mint, rosemary And ba- basil basil Also help to repel pests Naturally Mow your yard to restrict the places Where bugs can hide and breed Remove leaf litter Prune shrubs with sharp blades To ensure a good cut instead of tearing Which allows the insects to thrive Ticks flourish in moist and shady areas of the yard A natural barrier of pebbles and mulch Keeps ticks away Because standing water is a potential breeding zone for mosquitoes Discard stagnant water from bird baths Dog bowls, pots, and other receptacles Deet and picaridin based products are commonly used insect repellents that provide longer lasting protection from flies, fleas, mosquitoes, and small flying insects. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, DEET is safe when used as directed. There you go. That's from the Costco connection. Which I man. One of these days I gotta get over there And get me some deodorant Cause that's another thing during the summertime I tend to use a little more of that stuff Now I know a guy that makes his own deodorant My friend, uh, this guy that does that You know what his name is? Stinky Perhaps you have heard the phrase Without a clear destination Any will do And we don't know where we are going But we are making good time And the devil is in the details Well Independently Each of these phrases foreshadows behaviors That are often missing Or underdeveloped In bad leaders And lacking in the organizations they attempt to lead In the first phrase The themes are clarity and destination And the second The themes are direction and momentum And the third The themes are personality and detail Each phrase emphasizes core principles Essential to effective leadership And organizational success Says E. Arthur Self, PhD From his book Good Success Learning Good Lessons from Bad Leaders Customers, employees, and society in general Have high expectations that proper direction Discernible momentum And sufficient detail Will be inherent in every entity With which they interact And interface This is because customers, employees And society in general Desire integrity and genuineness In their institutions Hey, we're outside a cafe anyway Somewhere in Podcast Grove, LA Look who's here Hi, Mike. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. Hi, hi. How you doing? And to this grown fellow player, tell you what. What? What's Tears for Fears? It's a, it's a band. It's actually two guys at the core of it, but yeah, they've been around since the early 80s. Yeah, never heard of it. Tell you what. What? Why don't y'all play some Leonard Skinner in your lyrics for your show? Okay. That's a good idea. Look who else is here. Oh, man, can I make the least stupid answer? Thank you. I love this root beer. It's so tasty. Thank you. Oh, boy. You know, I'm going to drink it. Drink it right now. I'll cut you. 
There we go Ladies and gentlemen Why does the brewmaster say the same thing every show that he is on? You know, my favorite band of all time is of Monsters and Men Can you sing any words from any of their songs? Let's see that one yeah, you don't make me think my root beer hurt. That kind of sounds like the Lumineers. Oh boy. Oh boy. Exact. Well, he's trying, everybody. He's trying. We we did a little something different on this Saturday. <sighs> Thanks for having patience with me today on this podcast. And next podcast, we will have the wonderful Shelly Shooter. Oh, wait. Madam Rita Vega, Valentino, Bison Bentley. That's right. Thank you for listening. Tell all your friends. If you'd like to chime in, please call me 336-MM-DAILY. 3 plus 3 equals 6. MM is in Mike Matthews Daily, as in what this podcast is. Take us out, a friend. Burger Master. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.